Brad Holmes uh, swung a deal yesterday. Probably the biggest move of the day. And maybe after Glasgow. Glasgow, bringing back Graham Glasgow was a pretty big deal. But Detroit uh, gives up their third rounder, their pick from Minnesota in 92, to Tampa for cornerback Carlton Davis, a six rounder this year, number 201, and a six rounder next year. Okay. So what do they have in Davis? Well, if healthy, he was CB1 in Tampa, if healthy. And that's the thing. He has never had an entire uh, healthy season. This is a guy that gets hurt more than Jonah Jackson got hurt. I know people want to put the injury tag on him, but when healthy, uh, he was really good. He will be Detroit's best corner. He's 27 years old. He's got 75 starts and nine interceptions, and he's owed $14 million this year, the last year of his contract. Tampa primarily plays zone defense. He is known to be better in man coverage, and we'll play more of it here. Uh, the Birch Kid yesterday, uh, who writes for our website, a.k.a. Will Birchfield, uh, tweeted out the following. Davis, second in the NFL over the last five seasons with 69 passes defended and has excelled in man coverage. Passer rating against in man last year, Legereus Sneed, passer rating against 64, Carlton Davis, 66.7, Cam Sutton, 98.9. That's passer rating against in-man coverage. He's way better in man coverage than Cam Sutton, at least he was last year, and he's on par with Legereus Sneed. Now, Sutton apparently played the most snaps in man coverage in the entire NFL. So Davis has to see this, knowing what his strengths are, and has to be excited about the defense that he is coming to. It could be a good signing if he stays healthy. Yeah, it could be good. Um, he could be excited to wrap until the point he realizes, oh, wait a minute, Jordan Addison, uh, Justin Jefferson, uh, all those guys they have in Green Bay. What am I looking at in Chicago? A um, little bit different receiving core um, than maybe what he was used to, but that's okay. If he's up to it, great. If he's – this is a – this is a typical deal that Brad Holmes has made at um, in free agency or or trade deadline or whatever. It's it's a guy. It's a one year deal. You know they trade what well, they trade a third round pick and they get two six round picks back in return. Not that that's anything special. What they get is the player. And is he worth a third round pick for a season? I I hope so. Um, it is fourteen million dollars. It's a lot of money to spend on a guy who's oft injured. So you hope that he can stay healthy because that's another thing that we haven't had a whole lot of luck in uh, with Brad Holmes and free agency time, even though it's not a free agent signing. I just kind of associate with it because of the timing it is. A lot of the guys they brought in an off season have been injury risks. And here's another one. Yep. And then they go out and they sign Marcus Davenport, a defensive end. This moves the needle significantly less for me. Um, played the first four games last year. Had two sacks, one against Bryce Young, but everybody sacked Bryce Young. Uh, then he had a season-ending ankle injury. And quite frankly, I hope that James Houston is so good that this guy doesn't see the field a ton. Uh, I, he seems like a depth guy, not a front line. You know what he is? I, I expect Charles Harris-like production. I, I don't, you know, I don't know that we should expect much more than that. He's had one pretty good year, but... Uh, this one doesn't really move the needle much at all for me. I remember liking him at the combine when I saw him work out, and he has had flashes where he looks great, whether it was with uh, the Saints or even with the Vikings. But another guy got hurt, right? Mm -hmm. He only played four games last year, had two sacks in four games. Um, that's another question mark. And was he getting $10 million a year for the one year? Yep. So it's it's not big money, but it's bigger money. Spent on a guy for one more year. Well, it's up so to these ten million. It's a, yeah, so right. there's, you know, he's got to perform. But yeah, but the, I guess the point is that these deals do not affect what happens when they people are worried. Well, you got to free up money for a St. Brown or for Goff or for Sewell or for Hutchinson or for a Lee McNeil. No, you don't. You don't have to worry about that because these these deals are done after the year. So they have nothing to do with the extensions that are coming for the players that are ready for the extension. Now there is some speculation that they will extend Davis. Um, I don't know that they need to maybe, you know, see how his yeah, season how is going. Plays, and yeah, yeah. but it, look, um, you know, this is, they, these have been categorized as moves that make them better. Davis, again, if he's healthy, they're definitely better. 
it's impossible to predict. I, I, you know, the guys never had a full season and, um, and Tampa, this is a cap casualty, by the way, Tampa wouldn't want to have moved on from him, but they had to free up some cap space and they decided to let go of a guy that was often injured. And the truth is the set, and I, I don't want to say sad, but the reality is he might've got cut by Tampa. Uh, but then he's a free agent. He can go anywhere and he can sign for more. This is, they know what they are paying now and they know that they've got him. So I can see why they wanted to make a trade for him, but they were, they were up against the cap. They needed to free up some cap space. This was a guy that they could do so. And so they were willing to move on from him. And the guy that, that came in and placed him, whose name escapes me right now, but he played, uh, he played reasonably well. So they're just going to hand the job to a cheaper alternative, which is, Something that, you know, we've seen well teams do. Tampa just, you know, they, they just signed or re-signed the quarterback and, and wide receiver. So there's a ton of money tied up there. So freeing up a little bit here would kind of make sense. Davis is going to be really good for the Lions if he can stay healthy. Yep. Because that's the thing. I mean, everybody says, well, when he's on the field, he's great. He makes plays all over the place. Not afraid to stick his nose in there. And he's got good makeup speed. And he passes defended the whole bit. But... Can he stay healthy? It's a big question, and hopefully he will. 248-539-9797. Okay, Lions fans, that was the start of the 2024 season, day one Monday. And overall, how do you feel? Uh, are you happy? I mean, are you not surprised, given what Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell said? Are you actually stoked about the addition of Davis? And look, I... I pointed out that while there are times that you can get way better and you can go with the huge move and, and which comes with a huge financial commitment typically, but all you really need is, are you going to be better next year and how much better? I don't think these two moves are anywhere close to enough. Obviously they still have a starting guard that they've got to figure out. And there are moves out there looming that again, they might be preparing for. They might be war chesting for. 